What is up, everybody? My name is Dane Thompson, and welcome back to another episode of Burn Down. So we are back on the Twinnebago project once again today. What I'd like to do today, finally the sun is out. It's been raining for like four days, which I know if you're in a different state, that doesn't sound like a lot, but for me, it's a lot. Plus, with all the lockdown stuff, it just makes it that much worse. You're like, hey, not only is there nowhere to go if I wanted to go somewhere, I can't even go outside because it's freaking raining. So I'm more than excited to get out here, except for the fact that I have to crawl underneath the Winnebago. So we are gonna mess with the brakes today. It has a very funky setup. I believe it's called a hydrovac system. It has a master cylinder like a normal, you know, vehicle does. And then that has, uh, that pushes on two more master cylinders that are underneath it that have uh, vacuum boosters attached to those. And then those push all the wheel cylinders. So kind of a goofy setup. I'll throw a picture of it on the screen so you get an idea what we're looking at. But uh, my goal today is to crawl underneath there wrestle those big ass boosters from underneath it and then pull one of them apart and measure the size of these uh it's like a slave cylinder i mean we'll call it a master cylinder but the master cylinder underneath um the motorhome because that'll dictate what size master i need to put up front and then we will just push hopefully a hydro boost system from a later model gm and then we'll just push all the brakes off of that kind of like a normal system and then uh Kind of see what we're in for for lines and things like that. I think it's like quarter inch lines in there. So we'll have to see how this whole thing kind of unfolds. But first, let's go crawl underneath the Twinnebago, take a look at what we got and what we're getting ourselves into. I think the other thing too is I want to jack the front up, give myself a little more room. It has the motor in there now, if you watched the last video. So she's sitting nice and low, which doesn't make it easy to get in and out from underneath it. So let's go do this, shall we? We're gonna have fun today, me and you. So we got her up on the wood blocks give myself a little room and then to show you guys this is where the master cylinder is and there's no boost or anything attached to it so this pushes these lines and they go way back underneath we'll crawl under there right now and I'll show you those things I was talking about there's a beautiful six liter too by the way <laughs> Dude, this concrete by the way I don't know if you guys can see that but it is like so gnarly that the cardboard I had got soaked from the rain so I brought my little yoga mat that I like to work on and there you go these are the big dogs we're gonna take out of here and then this little guy here which actually is pretty surprising I'm kind of excited it looks like maybe an inch inch and sixteenth this is what I'm after is this guy and this guy and I want to see if they're the same size one pushes the front, one pushes the rear brakes, but I'm gonna delete both of these and then just set it up kind of like a normal rig. So yeah, you can see the lines that are torn off on there. So we got our work cut out for us, but let me see what size bolts we got on these big dogs. And we'll take these out and then we'll dissect it. Hopefully I just spin that off on the bench and then we can get a measurement on this. But hell, that doesn't look like anything special. If it was like a big old freaking barrel, I'd be worried, but that ain't no big deal, I don't think. Let's get these turds out of the way. Before I start kind of ripping into this, I wanted to show you guys. It's funny, I don't know if that's road. Oh, this must be from the drive shaft. Spin and see the drive shaft supposed to sit here. That's why I have my drive shaft in either, by the way, because I need to pull these out. But um, yeah, this hose right here, you can see it's disconnected up there. But that went all the way to the engine. So this big old line right here is engine vacuum. And then this guy, I don't even know what that hard line right there goes to. Let's see this hard line. Um, so I gotta undo all those, but there's only those two bolts and this bolt holding each one of these guys in with a couple lines. And then the lines look like quarter. So it'd be like a dash four instead of a standard. But when we take this out, I'll see what size fitting that is. And then, you know, they run up in there. We've got all the, uh, all the fun stuff for forcing valves and all that. So a lot of lines and things that are in here are probably decent, but we'll just have to see because it, it comes in to here. So we may just take it from here back. We'll see what, cause the pressure side coming in here, we can just lead the pressure side from the front now into that. And then the rest of it should kind of be in place. That's what I'm hoping, but let's get these out of the way and then we'll see how we go. Pull this big ass hose out of here start making some room for myself 
and uh, getting rid of things that aren't necessary. Okay, so we have some lines loose. I got um, the pressure lines, the feed and pressure on both of these loose. And I just took this vacuum line loose. This is this big metal piece as it goes up to those two hoses. It's one of them. I don't know why they went metal and then up to the hose, but anyway, I cracked this and then this thing actually let go. So this booster is still good. So I don't know if somebody could actually use that thing. Although I don't know what this goes to and who knows, but let me crack this one and uh, we'll see if she makes noise again. Actually, it's this guy because this just goes into the booster itself. So uh, I bet, see, I bet this used to go here. I bet it broke off. Yeah. So that thing's tactically no good, even though it does hold, but um, I guess somebody could drill it, tap that. Maybe that is tapped in. Anyway, let me crack that loose. We'll see if this one's still good too. I wonder how long it's been sitting holding vacuum. Right tool for the job. First time, every time. The one nice thing I will say about this freaking thing is that uh, I haven't had any really crazy bolts. I don't even want to say it, but I haven't had any that were stuck terrible yet. Nope. No vacuum in that guy. All right. So this vacuum line, see how it goes to the T and to this one. So all that's left, I should just be able to drop these guys and we'll take them out and see what we got. All right, one down, one down, one to go. We got the one out, it's full of oil and I think because of the vacuum, it sucks in some oil. That was one of the things they were saying will make these things not work properly. So let me clean up real quick. I'm gonna get my automatic ratchet and then uh, wipe down, we'll pull this guy out and we'll go dissect it. So we got the other one out. We got both these dudes out. Um, I'm just gonna pull this and then this line, all this stuff that's in the way out. We will leave these lines here. And then that way I can figure out one's gonna come from the master and then one's gonna go to either the front or the rear. So I'm gonna look into where these things go and then maybe I can just basically connect them together and then I don't have to make new lines at least under here. And then, uh, yeah, I can just come from the master and go straight. We'll just skip this section and connect it where this used to be the connecting factor. We'll just connect, you know, this one to this one essentially. And that will give us the rest of our lines. And then obviously I gotta make soft lines or whatever, but I don't have to make as much hard line if we do it that way. That is if I can, well, I think I could AN. Hopefully this doesn't split, it should be steel. If I'll just put an AN connection, that's a lot easier than this double. His double flares a pain in the ass. I'm not gonna be able to do that underneath here, so. All right, so we got this bad boy out. And then again, the whole reason I pulled this out is uh, we will take it over to the garage, see if we can't get this end cap. I think this piece comes off. And then I'd like to measure the bore diameter. Although, dude, it's gotta be an inch, inch and eight. This looks like standard stuff, but we're already this far. If I can get this cap off without too much uh, of a hassle, we'll take this off, see if we can't measure that. And then at least we know we got the right size master. So we pretty much got that frame section kind of cleared out. I was looking at the lines and I think what we can do where the prop valve and all that stuff is, um, I just figured out which ports were pressure, you know, and which ones went where. But ultimately, this thing, all it did was connect, you know, the input side and then it made it pressure. Well, now all the pressure is gonna come from the front because it'll be hydro boost. So where these two lines used to go in there and then out one side. Hopefully I can just connect those together on either one 
that saves me the trouble of making all those hard lines. We'll inspect all those. There's a few up front that got kind of chewed up, so I'll have to make a couple new hard lines. Like the one that jumped over from the trans tunnel and went to this side, uh, that thing got mangled in the process of doing the swap, so I'll make a new line for that. And then every single soft line is junk, and then the wheel cylinder. So we'll have to do our due diligence, see if I can get new wheel cylinders all the way around, and then I'll just have new soft lines made or purchase those and then get like adapter pieces. We'll see how we go. Cause again, I don't want to mess with the double flare portion if I don't have to. So we're just going to take everything to an AN style fitting. Makes life easy. I love AN fitting. So let's see if we can pull that apart. Dude, that's got to be like a one inch bore. That's not very big at all. Let's see if I can measure that somehow, but yeah, I think that's only like a one inch. So, it's not bad. One inch bore master cylinder, so we should be good. Probably even an inch and an eighth would work. It just push them even harder, but yeah. All right, we got some calipers here. Harbor Freight Special zeroed it out. And then if I just go, um, this is gonna be what we're gonna measure on. But let's see, let's do it upside down. Then you guys can see. So zeroed out, zero. And then I'll just measure just the end of this. That's as far as I can kind of get into it. So if we just grab that, there we go just under one inch right here at the thread and then the cylinder that goes in I don't know if you guys can see it it gets even more shallow so that's I mean that's a pretty much a one inch bore so that's fairly simple now I need to look around see what we can find for GM stuff and uh, we will go from there so what I will do is uh, we'll call this one today on here I will do my due diligence we'll bring you guys back I'll find the master cylinder we're gonna use measure things up and the next time you guys can watch me struggle with that. So, um, yeah, we got these out of there. Kind of clean some stuff up. Next go around, hopefully we can put a new master in and start making some connections and uh, getting these brakes kind of lined out so we can put the rest of the crap in there. I don't want to put the rest of the motor in without the brakes in place, though, because it'll, you saw how hard it is to kind of get to right now. So we don't want to struggle as much as we don't have to. So until next time, you guys, like, subscribe, share. You know what to do. Keep it locked. I'm out. Legitness. Yeah, it was. <laughs>